Hello, I'm Alexander Clark, and I would highly recommend Keith Andrew Network because uh, it has given me a chance as a British actor to talk to someone from the States and perhaps get my name out in the States. Um, he's down to earth, but not just that, he's someone who makes it very easy to talk to him. Um, so please, hashtag Keith Network, give them a chance. gentlemen you're watching the Keith Andrew Network that is right it is the Keith Andrew Network and it's a, our special Halloween edition this is episode 634 that's right 634 of the one and only Keith Andrew Network for people who want to know what the Keith Andrew Network is the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having an ordinary disability I can still amount to something, and at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing, dealing with any types of learning. <laughs> I do that again. Whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with dealing with a learning disability, I can still amount to something, and at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities. To never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you want to be. And it's to prove to them and stem out something. So hashtag break the labels. So that being said, it's a real honor and put, but it's a heavy honor show. And today's episode is brought to you by the Key Fans you Network. Never give up and prove people wrong. So that being said, our uh, today's guest is changed up the format a well. Today's guest is live from England. He is a professional actor, and his name is Alexer Alexen. I just call him Alexer Clark, <laughs> Mister Alexen Clark. Yeah, Alexander Clark. Yeah. There's a lot of different names. Alexer Alexen. There's a wrestler named Alexen Black. So when I saw Alex, sir, the first thing that popped into my name was, oh, you're kind of like Alex in Black. <laughs> yeah, I've not played with him. I've played him before. <laughs> but I'm here with Al Mr. Alex, sir, um Clark, and you are a professional actor from England. And with that being said, it'll be a half hour, 33 minutes every time. See how it goes. Say anything you want. Talk about whatever you want. Freedom of speech, self-expression. And starting off, the first thing I saw is you were from England. How was England, and have you ever been to the States? I have been to the States. I've been to um, places like, for example, Florida, uh, Miami. Um, I've not been to like California or any of the Midwest, but I have been to New York. Um, been to New York twice. It's um, it's, a, it's it's a great place to go to the States. Um, England as a whole at the moment is it's okay. I mean, we we we're going through. Uh, a bit at the moment with Brexit, but apart from that, I think everything is going fine. <laughs> same old, same old, same old country. No, absolutely. Now, when you came to the states, was there a big transition, or is America similar to England and England similar to America? Um, the well, when I first came to the states, it was when I was very young. Um, in terms of like transition-wise, in terms of like differences. America is a lot bigger. Um, like, for example, if I wanted to go to um, London, I live around about close to 200 miles away from London at the moment. If I want to visit London, it's an hour and a half, two hours on the train. If I wanted to go from, say, for example, New York to <laughs> Chicago, that's a thousand miles. That's like, God knows how long that will take me. <laughs> so it's a big country as America. I mean, it's a lot warmer. I know that. It's a lot warmer in the States than it is in, um, in England. 
No. So shout this. Kill me. <laughs> they kill me. Now, the next question I was going to ask you is, I'm going to stay on this subject to how long a far as the show, is you are a professional actor. The first question I want to ask you is, who influenced you, and what influenced you to become an actor? Well, I was influenced to become an actor when I was seven years old. I went to a local um, theatre production of King Rat, when I, uh, which was based here in Doncaster, in South Yorkshire, England. That was when I was seven years old, and just seeing it, uh, I was hooked. I was, I had the bug straight away. Throughout school, I went to, I studied acting, like I did plays at school and outside of school at places like the Doncaster Little Theatre, Starstruck Theatre Academy. Um, so from a young age, I got influenced. In terms of people who who influenced me, well, I'm a big film buff. I love films. Um, people that, like actors who I want to look to, look up to would have been people like Heath Ledger, for example, da- Daniel Day Lewis. Uh, I first watched um, ninety eight. I think it was nine, even nineteen ninety one or nineteen ninety two. Uh, Last of the Mohicans. I watched that one. I was probably eleven, probably twelve, and. His performance in that, the fact that he he actually spent, I believe it was eight months in the wilderness, in the Canadian wilderness, where they were filming, just to prepare for the role. It was his dedication that I sort of like grasped me. He fledges Joker. Uh, he fledges also in The Patriot and a number of other films, like 10 Things I Hear About You, um, films like that. So, but I had a lot of influence from um, a lot of, like British actors as well. Um, one of the people that influenced the most growing up um, was actually through my my dad showed me a lot of um, TV shows and films. And there was one particular, you, I don't know if you've heard of it, Only Fools and Horses. It's a TV show. It's um, It's been around for, since I believe it was like the 70s. Um, that had David Jason in it. Now, David Jason is a, um, a British actor, comedian actor. Then we have stuff like Black Adder, uh, who got people like Rowan Atkinson in it. He, uh, Mr. Bean, he, he certainly, just the fact that he was able to make the world laugh just without saying anything. Um, Hugh Laurie, uh, oof. I'm dropping some massive names here. Uh, like, just there's there's too many to really to really mention, but I I'm now 27 and I've been acting professionally for close to five years. But I first started acting, obviously doing performance work when I was seven years old. Now the next question I want to ask you is: Have you ever worked with people with disabilities? And are you willing to work with people with disabilities? Apparently, well, you're working with me, so obviously. That's well, a yes. Yeah, um, well, I actually have um, learning dif- disabilities, myself, well, learning difficulties myself. I am dyslexic. Um, so what dyslexia is for people who don't know is it's mainly to do with spelling, reading, writing. Like, my spelling is atrocious. I can read, I can read okay. I can write <laughs> to an extent if you want to call what I, what I use as writing, uh, people can't read my writing. I can't even read my own writing. Um, but that's why, like, for example, I use, like, a lot of, like, um, for line learning, for example, I use a lot of, like, line learning apps, uh, a lot of repetition. Um, in terms of working with people with disabilities, people with disabilities are the same as anyone else. I would happily work with someone with disability, I also write as well as act, and um, one of the um, short films that I am writing actually does have someone with a um, disability in it, um, someone who is autistic. The character itself is autistic. Um, and I actually, funny enough that you actually mentioned that, um, a couple of people have mentioned to me, because um, I have a friend who's also an actor who's um, autistic, and a few people said to me, do you think you'll get far? Do you think with a disability you'll be able to 
obviously becoming a professional actor, will he be able to make anything of himself? It's the same question people ask me, and I, I, I say the same answer to them, yes. Because one thing that people don't realise about people with, for example, autism, um, Asperger's, they're extremely smart. Um, my friend was able to learn a full feature length script in a day. <laughs> now, to put that in perspective, that was 176 pages. He could learn that in one day. I cannot. <laughs> uh, takes me a little bit longer, but he somehow just did it. So what you're uh, so what we're, uh, you're saying is people with disabilities are usually smarter than the normal people. Well, it depends on the disability, but like people are smart regardless. But yeah. like him in particular, he just there's he just he can just pick up on pick up on things, and he just because of the way that his mind works and the way that a lot like for example my mind works, we look at the world differently. The way that your mind works to mine is completely different. So, for example, with um, with maybe script work or um, information, you'll be able to maybe retain it in a different way that I do. So when people say to me, oh, well, why would you work with someone who's got a like, learning difficulty or learning disability? I say, well, why not? Because they look at the world a different way to me, and actually I could learn a lot from them, and they can learn a lot from me. So it's a, it's a two-way street. It, it, we can help each other. No, absolutely. Now, the next question I want to ask you is, you know, usually I kind of like wing the questions, but as a way, I feel kind of rusty. So it's a perfect time to go back to the imaginary green book. Well, it's not imaginary. It's my actual book that I haven't used in a long time. But the next question I was going to ask you is, you could work with any actor or actress, who would it be and why? You That's a hard question. Um, well, if he was still alive, he pleasure, because there's so much that I thought that I could learn from him. In terms of actors and actresses that are alive today, I'd probably say, oof, um, I can't remember how to pronounce her name. I'm going to try and pronounce her name because, like, I I can't say it. I'm going to try and look it up for you because um, the way that. Um, the, the way that I like I um like because obviously with my dyslexia when I whenever I try and read something I it doesn't always no go absolutely in. I have on my phone called text to speech so I would yeah. write the person's name and it will pronounce it for me and I would do it like two three times until it sinks in but then actually while you're walking out the next question I want to ask you is what do you recommend any acting classes and have you ever taken any acting classes? I have taken acting classes. Um, I would happily, I would definitely recommend them because always working on your craft is something that you need to do as an actor. Um, it's, it's like anything. Uh, if you want to be a martial artist, you have to train. If you want to be an engineer, you have got to train. It's the same thing with acting. A lot of people say to me, oh, well, I can sort of wing it and I can sort of like not, not train. That'll only get you so far. Um, I've, I trained as a method actor, so the same style of acting as Heath Ledger, uh, Jared Leto, uh, Al Pacino. Those, um, those three actors in particular actually are method actors. Um, and a friend of mine that uh, I actually trained with, uh, his name's Luke. Luke Goddard, he's um, he's a method actor. Him, going back to your earlier question, when my phone decides to work, one of the actors that I would happily work with, who's from the states actually, I believe, I believe he's from the states. Um, when I find the film that he's actually been in, because it's the one that I can actually remember him from. No, not that film. In terms of like, like I'd love to work with people like Kirsten Dunst, um, like Tommy Lee Jones, people like that, Christina Ricci, but the one that I'm trying to look for when I find it, and, may, and this is mainly because of his face, like his facial acting, it's 
It's phenomenal. When I find it. Well, let me ask you this in the meantime. Um, two uh, interesting questions. Can you give me a time where your acting work has been criticized? That's my first question. Okay. Well, I found the guy now is William Defoe. No, uh, he's one of the best. I knew I was going to screw his name up, so that's why I looked up. Um, in terms of my acting being criticised, <laughs> I've had it a few times. Uh, I was I did a fair production in um, in Doncaster, and I had someone someone come in the audience who it wasn't a critic or anything like that. It was uh, it was a family friend actually, and. He, um, he's like, uh, I believe he's like a, he's a novelist. He's into, he's like an author. And he said, you picked the wrong choices. And for me personally, robotics is something you should have done. Something along the lines of that. And so he was basically calling me robotic. And this was towards the beginning of my career. So... It didn't, weirdly enough, it didn't phase me because um, when when he was when he was saying that to me, I just I just thought, sort of thought to myself, you, this is your opinion. Like, it, I'll take on board what you've said, uh, but it doesn't. You don't really understand the story. Um, for example, that that um, that fake production, I was actually playing. Um, it was a, a production of cartoon, which if you haven't heard of, is a very like over the top sort of cartoon manic, psychotic, uh, crazy piece of theatre. And I was playing the suitor, and the p- particular scenes I had to be quite stiff, rigid, because in those scenes I am very awkward. I'm very nervous. I'm sort of dumbfounded and so it actually worked for the scene that's the reason why I did it so when he did say that to me I I sort of I took it on board I realized that he didn't really understand the production and why I've chosen chosen those choices with all the um, characters I play I do always try and do a lot of research Um, so whatever choice I do choose, I choose them for a reason, I feel. <laughs> no, absolutely, I agree with you. I started to laugh because I thought it would be funny if you just stopped and turned to the guy and like, shut up, you wanker. <laughs> very, very tempted, but no, I did not. <laughs> now, what about, can you give us a time, trying to find out without a, like, a question form, was there ever an experience where you're doing your acting role and there was a conflict and you really hated this person or whatever the case may be? How did you overcome that conflict and how did you get through it? Oh, in terms of, of castmates? In terms of um, yes. the castmates? Um, For an example, if someone was an asshole, but you're like, well, we have to do this scene anyway because on camera we look good together, but you can't stand this person. And it has happened in Hollywood where... You know, people, I can send you the video or um, actors who hated each other, but they had to act together. I, I, I often watch videos like that. Um, but for me, no, I've, I've never come across any of that um, animosity, apart from perhaps a time in college. Um, so, yeah, over in England, we have university, college, and obviously high school or secondary school. Um, I went to, I did, I did not three. Um but when I went to college, I studied performing arts, and there was one kid who ironically had the same name as me, Alex. So his name was also Alexander. Um, not naming his last name because I don't really need to. He, um, he decided to sabotage me um, or attempt to sabotage me during a performance, which we were getting marked on. We were get, it was getting assessed. And um, I screwed up due to his attempts, I got marked down. He didn't get in trouble. 
at all because he just happens to be a favourite of the teacher. Um, of course, things like that do happen, but like at the time, I was I was very annoyed, as you can as you can assume. But I decided to sort of let it go because there's no point holding on to like grudges. This in this industry, people should not have grudges against each other. Like, if you work professionally with people, you work professionally with people. Like I. I'm a very professional person. I will work as professionally and as best as I can with whoever I'm working with, even if they have a problem with me. If they do, then they have a problem and I will happily ask them what's going on because I want to be able to work smoothly with whatever production I'm doing. Um, I've, I've not worked with that, with that guy since. Luckily, um, ironically, I, a few people have um, who I know who have worked with them and have had similar things happen to them. So it just it's just it's just him. It's just something that he does, and like that's that's just the way it is. He, no, he's, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, all I was going to say is that like um, he he he's getting himself a bad reputation by doing that. So, it's it's karma, karma, karma will will get him one day. Now the last question I want to ask you, then we can take take a commercial break. Is actually I'm gonna save that one till we come back. Is what motivated you to be an actor? Like what gets you up every day and say, "This is what I want to do for the rest of my life." Um, as silly as it sounds. It's because this is what I want to do. It's not the I, I don't care about fame or fortune or any of that. That's that's a, a lot of people have said to me, Oh well that's why you want to be an actor because you want to get famous, you want to get money. I'm like, No. I still work a regular day job and that doesn't phase me, it doesn't bother me. I don't I don't care about fame. I never have done. What I care about is creating something create something that's truthful, something that's natural and something that someone might take inspiration from. Um, if so, I've had, I've had a couple of people come up to me and they've said that they, they've loved characters that I've played and like I've actually got a small fan base in the, in the States at the moment just from one of the short films I did and it's not even, it's not very long and I'm, very happy to have that. I'm 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 chuffed, as we say in England. I am I'm very. I can't. It's, it sounds it sounds weird, but I'm I'm kind of lost for words when when I was told that because like I I'm still always learning as an actor. You you always are. You always work on your craft. You always try to perfect it. So when people come up to me and they they say, oh. What's, I like seeing this, and I, I've, I like hearing about this, and hearing about the stuff that you're doing. It, it's very, it's very heartwarming, and nope. it, it, that's another reason why I do it. Absolutely. Now we're gonna take a, com a commercial break. It was the last eight minutes. I'm gonna ask you two more questions. And I'm gonna pass the show over to you. I'm Linda Collins. Hi, I'm Marissa Joy Davis. This is Michelle Wong. And I'm Nancy Rose. My name is Brandy Hunt. And hello, my name is Raven Wynn. Hi there. My name is Giovanna Vidal. Hi, I'm Monica Thomas. Hi, I'm Paisley Blackburn. I'm Ashley Burgess. Hi, my name is Jeanette Abney. Hi, I'm Sharon Spink. Hey, this is Samantha Moore. Hi. I'm Melody Jones. Hi, my name is Becky Yee. Hi, you're watching the Keith Andrew Network. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching the Keith Andrew Network. We are back with 634. That's right, 634 is Alexander Clark. He is a local professional actor, wife from England. And he was nice enough to join us today when we're back from the show. The following is brought to you by Instagram. On the bottom of the screen, you have my Instagram name and Alex's Instagram name. Make sure to subscribe to both of us on Instagram. And make sure to follow the Keith Andrew Network live on YouTube.com. Go to YouTube, type in the Keith Andrew Network.com, become a subscriber, 
hit that bell icon. You will be notified when new episodes are ready. And we're also on Facebook as well, KeithAngieNetwork.com. With that being said, first thing I do want to say is trying to find a good one to start with because there's so many I, I, I can want to start with. Social media. Can social media make you or break you with everything that you accomplish? You know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Do these sites help you get acting roles or do you think they kind of hinder you? The thing is, it's a double-edged sword because um, a lot of actors I know have got quite a small social media following. I have got quite a small social media following. If you were to look at my um, Instagram, at the moment I have 367 followers. It's not massive, it's quite small, but those are the people who choose to follow me. It does help. Like you, you have seen that I, I know a lot of people who have got a lot of work of having a big social media following. I know a lot of people who haven't. Um, for me personally, I have found a lot of work through Facebook, a lot of uh, things through, for example, Actors UK, which is a um, Facebook group for actors, directors, producers, writers, um, and a few others actually, a few a few other groups on Facebook. Um, for a lot of the student projects that I've done, I've, I've found through Facebook, so it does help, but it's not make or break. Um, I've not found. Uh, I found actually through network. Like I, I mainly go to like networking events, either in the, the north of England or the Midlands. Uh, one being Nexus, which I'm happy to plug, which is owned by um, a dear friend of mine called Emlyn. She's a uh, she's an actress from um, Nottingham, and that is a uh, a lot of that is how I have networked with a lot of people through that, and I've been lucky enough to do that. Another one would be the uh, South South Yorkshire. Um, actually, I'm going to make sure that I say the name correctly when I find it. Come no, on, no. Do you think like you know? It's your Facebook following, it's your Twitter following, it's your Instagram following. Do those dictate if people should work with you? And do you think if people should follow you? What, what, um, what do you mean by, by, the, uh, by the social media, you mean? Well, can, like, what does it, does it dictate if people should work with you? Does it help convince them, say, you know what? He has a big following. We should give this person a chance. What is your honest opinion? I, has I it actually helped you? Think it's that much. I, I, not in terms of um, people wanting to work with you. Um, reputation um, is something that helps people work with you. Um, social media, it's just, it's, it helps to an extent because it gives you a chance to network, but it doesn't, in my in my honest opinion, it doesn't. Not all social media helps. I mean, Facebook's helped me, but um, Instagram hasn't very much. I haven't got any work from Instagram, but I've got work from Facebook. I've got gotten work from Twitter. Twitter is the main one um, that I would recommend for actors because it gives you a chance to actually follow the um, like. For example, it gives you a chance to follow casting directors. Writers, directors, fellow actors, if you are yourself a creative, uh, and for example, if you have a script, then you can you can find a lot of actors through that because, and like YouTube actually does help because um, like my, my show role is currently on YouTube. Um, without YouTube, I would only have like a, like a hard copy of my uh, show reel. I wouldn't have um, like a video version of it. So to answer your question, yeah, it, it does help, but it's not the make and break. It doesn't dictate uh, if people want to work with you or not. No, absolutely. Now, the next question I was going to ask you is, do you have any projects that are up in the work? Um, well, I've just wrapped on a um, feature film, which I, I which is called um, Bring, Up, Bring Back Goldeneye. That's, uh, that's coming out later next year. I am writing 
a feature film which I've been writing for the past two years, which is called The Laughing Girl, which is based around a friend of mine who unfortunately um, committed suicide um, two years ago now. So I'm writing it in her memory, and it's um, a romantic drama. I'm also writing uh, three short films, and I'm currently looking at, and I'm in talks with um, a couple of people about working on their, their projects as a co-writer and also an actor. Um, one person that I, one project that I am working on um, at the moment is that I'm writing is, it's not got a full title yet, but it is called, at the moment it's called Submission. It's based around um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It's, a, it's like an action film which um, I, I am still obviously writing. Another one that I've just wrapped on um, that I can talk about is uh, Place Your Bets, which is a short um, comedy sketch that I did with um, a guy called um, Samuel Flanagan, who is a writer based in Leeds. Um, that was very fun to do. Uh, the most fun project that I've done is being about Goldeneye because that was the, the the first major comedy production that I've worked on and it was an honor to work on it. It's, well, I wish I could talk more about it, but it's the projects that I am hopefully going to be working on, get my scripts getting written and fully written by the end of, um, you know, end of February. And I'll have it filmed, hopefully, mid-2020, and have it just, and we'll see how it goes from there. No, absolutely. Now we only have a few seconds left. The last question I want to ask you is, when I first approached you to be a guest on my talk show, what was your first honest reaction? What made you say yes? And how do you feel now? Would you recommend it to other people? Well, funnily enough, I actually saw your um, your Instagram live with um, Samantha Weller, who's um, she's a she's a great actress from what I've seen, and hopefully one day I'll be able to work with her um, if I can come out to Virginia. So Samantha, if you're watching this, I'll, you, I would love to work with you. And if you are ever in England, please do call me up. Um, my honest opinion was I actually I like what you're doing. I like the message that, you, that you're, that you're um, giving to people. It's never give up because it's a message that I myself believe in tenfold because everyone in this industry is a tough industry and that's why I feel that people shouldn't give up no matter what age you are, no matter if you've got a disability, um, no matter anything, your, your background, your... Um, for example, if you're middle class, working class, upper class, doesn't really matter. Um, oh, I just remembered actually. Another thing that I'm working on is uh, I'm setting up a actors podcast called uh, the Actors in, Actors in the Industry, and I will be looking for guests soon. So I will be happy to have you on board if you are happy to uh, be a guest. No, I would love that. Thank you. And my last question for you, wrapping up, then I can talk off the air is how can people follow you on social media? Are you on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn? I'm on, I am on LinkedIn. I am just going to get my LinkedIn stuff out because I can't remember off the top of my head, unfortunately. That's, that's the one thing that I do find hard with social media is remembering all the uh, social media things that I have. Because I have Twitter, I have LinkedIn, um, my social media is if anyone wants to find me on LinkedIn, it is simply just Alex Clark. That's Alex, A-L-E-X, Clark, C-L-A-R-K. Now, I have two, um, I have my Instagram account, which is Alex underscore actor underscore, underscore Clark underscore. That's my acting Instagram. Now, I have a Facebook group which I need to now find. I do apologize if we're going over time. 
My actor's um, Facebook group is um, simply at Alexander Clark Official. If anyone um, would like to get in contact with me to find my social media, um, my best beck and call would be through uh, either Twitter, which is also when I find it. I do apologize for this. <laughs> well, don't worry, it will be in the description on your Instagram, so they can just find you for that. Yeah, they can. Um, is my, my Twitter is very weird. It's um, Alexander, capital C, capital A. Um, sorry, Alexander, but it's capital C, and then actor with a capital A. But I will send you all my social media, so you can put it on the video. Now, my last question for you. Actually, I do have a couple questions for you off the air. But wrapping up, it was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest. And I'm looking forward to part two down the road. Happy to be a guest, and I'm honored to have you, to, uh, to have you allow me to be on your, your, uh, your talk show.